So here I'm going to remove a little tiny piece. This is a half inch square like the cornerstones. And I'm going to carefully pry up my piece. And this is why you don't want to stitch the folded part down. You want, and then so I'll just kind of slowly get under here and get all the fabric up. And I have a tendency to sometimes use too much glue, but this is why the glue matters. If you use that um, school glue, sometimes your fabric won't give way. And so then I'll get underneath here without touching this fabric and pull my piece out. And if I've stitched any of it, you'll see this little, that's because I put my needle through it. And then I don't save my papers, I throw them away because of this edge. There's no clear edge anymore. So I'm going to throw these away. And then for these long pieces, I'm just going to get right under here and slide my stiletto carefully and pry it up. Pry it up. And that's all I do is just... But I go slow. I don't want to... I mean, I've put my stiletto through pieces before, or through fabric before, but I don't like to. It's easier to gouge the paper than... or it's better to gouge the paper than the fabric. And so then I'm going to pry this piece up. And this is what I love my stiletto for. Because it's got a sharp point, but it doesn't, it's not going to cut because like scissors do. And then, so this one's coming up kind of difficult. So I'll come in here and I'll lift this and I'll get under the edge and then I'll slide this without the point over this way and see what part is stuck yet. And that'll come out on that end. And then this end. So I'm going to get this end out. So that's how I get the papers out. For a triangle piece, you just got to be careful about the bias. You don't want to pull on your fabric, especially on the, on the front edge. So I just, again, slowly move through it and that's why I try to get it on the edge of the fabric when I glue it so that there's a non-glued in theory non-glued section right here so that I could slide my stiletto in there but this one is this one's not wanting to let go at all so it's ripping my paper which happens so this is why I don't save my paper but I'll come in here and I'll get And I, my hand's at a weird angle, so I don't block the thing. But, and then sometimes my corners will not come out, too. Or the fabric itself will rip. Or the paper, excuse me, the paper itself will rip. Like this one, my paper is just coming apart. So I'll get everything I can out. And I'll pull. Mm -hmm. Pulling pretty hard. <laughs> there we go. So that came out, but then there's still some paper in here. So I'll just kind of kind of pick at it. And it's not the end of the world, but when you go to quilt it, especially if you quilt it by hand, you're not going to like to have to hit these papers. But what I can do is I can get my iron out and I can steam it or I can get this little wet which especially don't like to do on, with red on white because red runs. But, yep, so I'll just pick away at this, these bits until they're all out. I made a mistake. I took this piece out and it wasn't done being stitched to. So I'm going to try to just slide this paper back in there. so that I can stitch down this edge with relatively ease to this. Oops, but hey, we all make mistakes. One of the questions I get asked a lot is how do you remove papers from the applique when there's already paper on the block itself? So I just took out this paper and so now you can see where my applique is stitched and so I'm going to cut 
into it. My papers in my applique piece are still there. So I'm going to cut this, and you can cut it with the seam allowance on the edge. And I'm going to... My angle is not right because of my camera setup, but let's see what I can do here. So you just want to make sure that you're not going to cut your applique fabric. So I lift this up as I go. And I will then remove this all the way around and then pop this piece out. Okay, so I finished cutting around my edge and I'm going to pull this up and get right underneath here and just ease slowly pry up. I'm trying not to get the poke of my um, stiletto into the fabric. So I'm just pulling and then, put, and then I'm not trying, trying to pull carefully for the fabric on the other side. So I'm just easing the fabric away from the back side very slowly and I'm having issues. Okay, so I should be able to, there we go. And then on this side, same thing, pull this out. Alright, now I still have another piece in here. So this part is appliqued here, so I can cut this out, but I can only cut this out to this section. And same here. So I'm actually going to cut this piece where it's been appliqued, right here because that's not going to show either and it's already safely stitched down on every on every edge but if I cut this piece out with seam allowances this piece out with seam allowances and this piece out with seam allowances I can get out my paper okay so I've cut away my bits here and I was debating about whether or not to cut this and the reason I'm not going to is because I've knotted this off only at a specific spot. So if I cut this, it's going to loosen these threads, and I'm going to have to either tie it off again, or it's going to come loose. So I'm not going to touch this. So I'm going to leave this seam allowance here. But you want to do this and remove as much fabric as possible so that when you go to quilt it, it's a lot easier. So I'm going to get under here and pry up as much as I can. And I'm going to get under here and pry up as much as I can, and so on and so forth. And I am going to then pull my piece out from the middle, because that way I can pop it up. And in theory, it should pop up. Now, I've had problems with glues that would stick too much, because like I said, I've used that school glue. And I would have to turn over my row and look to see whether or not the stiletto was poking through to make sure that I was getting it out correctly. So I'll pull this out that way and I don't know that this one's loosened enough to come out this way. Oh, yep, there you go. And that's how we do that. 